Okay. <laughs> yes, sir. You may have. Yeah. yeah. Oh, probably no, no nicks. That's uh, <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the meeting of July 16th, 2018. I'd like to call this meeting to order. Please rise for the colors. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Order arms. Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. Brooke Simpson, roll call. Uh, Trustee Kruger. Present. Trustee Brady. Here. Trustee Vito. Here. Trustee Lang. Here. Trustee Vogo. Here. Trustee Papantos. Present. President Harker. Here. You have before you the minutes for the meeting of June 4th, 2018. I need a motion for their approval. So moved. Second. Second. I'll take a motion from Trustee Vogel, a second from Trustee Brady. Roll call. Trustee Kruger? Yes. Trustee Brady? Yes. Trustee Vito? Yes. Trustee Lang? Yes. Trustee Vogel? Yes. Trustee Papantos? Yes. President Horker? Yes. You also have before you minutes for the meeting of June 14th, 2018. I need motions. So moved. Motion Trustee Kruger? Second. Second Trustee Papantos. Roll call, please. Trustee Kruger? Yes. Trustee Brady? Yes. Trustee Vito? Yes. Trustee Lang? Yes. Trustee Vogel? Yes. Trustee Papantos? Yes. President Horker? Yes. Do we have any changes to the agenda? There are no changes this evening. Thank you, Mr. Spondilis. Administration of oaths. Okay. Chief Dunn, would you please? I'm Clerk Simpson. Thank you, sir. Welcome. Thank you for joining us tonight. Tonight's a very important night for the Village of Wheeling and for the Wheeling Police Department and uh, the individual officers and their families. Tonight we'll be promoting two corporals to the rank of sergeant and two patrolmen, pointing two patrolmen to the rank of uh, corporal. These are leadership positions within the organization. They'll be joining the ranks of uh, supervisors that have been guiding and leading the uh, department for numerous years and we look forward to their service with the Village. Sergeant. In the police department of the village of Wheeling. In the counties of Cook and Lake. You solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And I will faithfully discharge the duties of Sergeant according to the best of my abilities.
Jim is an 18-year veteran of the Wheeling Police Department, and he's served in the following capacities. He's been a corporal, as I mentioned, a field training officer, a detective, and a special uh, operations unit as a tactical officer assigned to the power car. Jim will be assigned to the afternoon shifts, so you'll see him out and about in town in the afternoons. And um, before we let you go, if you could introduce your special people that are with you today. Absolutely. I have my wife, Marilee, my son, Drew, my other son, Ryan, my brother, Justin, my mother, Gail, and my father, Bob. Just want to take a moment to thank my family for all their support. I want to thank the Police and Fire Board, the uh, Wheeling Police Department Command Staff, as well as the Village Board for entrusting me with this position. Thank you. Chris Rogers. I, Christopher Rogers, having been appointed to the position of sergeant in the police department, in the village of Wheeling, in the counties of Cook and Lake, we solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Illinois, and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of sergeant according to the best of my abilities. Chris is an 18-year veteran of the police department and has served in the following capacities. Also as a corporal, as a field training officer, a detective, and you may have seen him in the schools as a school resource officer. Uh, if you're out and about at 3 in the morning, you will see Chris because he'll be assigned to the midnight shift. Um, again, welcome to the leadership uh, part of the organization and uh, you'll do a great job. I just want to thank my family who came here. i got my wife, Crystal, my daughter, Ashley. My two grandkids, uh, Ethan and Parker, and my mom and dad, uh, Cindy and Steve, thanks for coming. Um, it's an exciting night. Um, it's also very special because me and Jim went to the academy together, so to get to promote it on the same day together is, is pretty special. Um, and we have a, a lot of new young officers um, that have been coming up the last few years, and um, I think it's very exciting that I'll be able to help lead those officers because they are the future of this police department. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it and thank you chief and thank you uh, trustees and, and the village for entrusting me with that uh, responsibility. Thank you. The position of corporal is an appointed position and the appointment comes from my office with input from the, uh, the deputy chief and the command staff. And these are gentlemen who have placed high on the sergeant's eligibility, eligibility roster, easy for me to say, and it provides them an opportunity to show their leadership skills and in the absence of the sergeant, they serve as the team supervisor and they provide input and help out with many things. So with that being said, I'd ask uh, Officer Jeremy Hoffman to step up. Jeremy is a 25-year veteran of the police department, and he has served as a DARE officer, a field training officer, a canine officer, an IPIS mobile field force team, and he has uh, participated as one of the original members of the police motorcycle unit. Um, for those of you who keep nine to five hours, you'll see Jeremy, he'll now be on the day watch, which will be new to him because I don't think he's been out in the daytime too much. <laughs> this will be good for him. So congratulations, Jeremy. I want to thank my wife, Tina, uh, my daughter, Gabby, and my daughter, Marcella, that were here. My son, Jacob, is working because he's got to pay for his college, so he couldn't make it, so that's a good excuse. Um, I want to thank Jim and Chris for getting promoted because that lets me move up, too, to do something else. So, but 
Thank you to everybody, and I'm going to do the best that I can for the village and the police department. Officer Dennis Belanda, Denny. Dennis is a 15-year veteran of our police department. He was a member of other police departments prior to joining us. He's been a field training officer, a traffic unit officer, and as a member of the major crash assistance team. Uh, Denny has been on the day shift. You've seen him around, but he'll also be going to midnight. So if you're out and about in town, you'll see him at night, and he'll do a great job for us. So thank you, Denny. I can introduce my wife, April, my daughter, Krista, my son, Michael, for their never-ending support in this job with my hours and my time away from home. I'd also like to thank the command staff and having faith in me for this position, and I'll do the best I can. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for your support of the police department. Uh, we know we have your support. You demonstrate it to us on a continual basis. I express to the officers all the time that they really enjoy the support of the public in this town, the community, and from our elected officials. For that, I sincerely appreciate you. On behalf of them, I thank you. Um, I, I just want to take a moment to know we have a couple of our retired officers who joined us today. We have Rich Hurtis in the back, a Wheeling, former Wheeling resident, and newly retired Sergeant Vic Cheerio, who kind of just kind of wanted to keep out the back door, but let's not worry. I would also like to thank all of you for your dedication to service to the village of Wheeling. Yeah. Um, we do have refreshments for a sm small celebration. Um, I would, they're just outside. I would like a motion to recess for uh, 15 minutes till about 7 o'clock. So moved. Motion, Trustee Kruger. Second. Second, Trustee Papanto. Is all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? You can stay city. We'll go get something to eat. Recess. <laughs>
to regular session. So moved. Motion, Trustee Vogel. Second. Second, Trustee Brady. Roll call. Uh, Trustee Kruger? Yes. Trustee Brady? Yes. Trustee Vito? Yes. Trustee Lane? Yes. Trustee Vogel? Yes. Trustee Papantos? Yes. President Horker? Yes. Clerk Simpson, citizens, concerns, and comments. Um, members of the public may address the commit the board with comments regarding only those items that are relevant to village business. No citizen shall speak for more than five minutes without consent of the board. Members of the general public who wish to address the board must sign the request to speak form prior to the commencement of the public meeting. Um, just as a reminder to the public, this is a time for citizens to make their comments and express concerns. This is not a time for the board to interact in conversation or debate. Thank you. Okay. Josh Philippi. Hello, I'm Josh Philippi. I live at 33 Wheeling Avenue. Um, so a couple months ago, I got a ticket for burning wood in my fire pit. Uh, I just had the verdict today, and apparently you can't burn anything in Wheeling. That includes wood. Um, I find it very weird that there's no law saying that you can't have a fire pit, um, even though building code, you can get a permit for one. So I just was kind of looking for justification somewhere saying you can't burn wood, even you know dried aged lumber. So I was very confused on this. Um, I have the uh, article in my phone. It's 5.30. Oh, let me see here. It's 5.32.030, um, and it says burning of paper, garbage, leaves, and other litter. Um, but the I, I forget the guy's name, the village attorney or whoever was at the court hearing today, um, said you can't burn anything in Wheeling, and that includes wood. And I just found that very Weird they are not allowed to burn wood in a fire pit. Um, just kind of wanted to know what your guys' thought was. Uh, we really don't enter into dialogue, but we will talk about this amongst uh, uh, you know, official comments. But I'm glad you brought it to our attention. Okay, thank you guys. Thank you. Margaret Butts. Hello, my name is Margaret Butts. My husband and I are the homeowners at 98 Fox Lane here in Wheeling, <clears throat> part of the Wolf, Wolf Run Estates neighborhood. I'm also a distribution manager for a large manufacturer here in Wheeling. Additionally, I'm one of the people who flies in and out of the Chicago Executive Airport. And I say all this because tonight's agenda includes a resolution authorizing the village president to execute a deed for the transfer of airport property to JV Global Services. I would implore you not to make this authorization, as I firmly believe this deal is short-sighted and not in the best interest of the village. While the sale of this land will generate a one-time bump in revenue for the village, it is not a good use of the land long-term. The purchaser has requested a rezoning with text amendment and an addition of a special use to the zoning code. This in and of itself should raise concerns because the proposed use of the land doesn't fit the existing zoning or any currently allowed use for that matter. This should be our first indication that the sale does not benefit the community because it doesn't fit the area. Additionally, if the village moves forward with this transfer, they will be foregoing other potential better uses of this property. Why sell to someone who's not going to generate significant sales revenue or create significant jobs? Why not wait for someone who wants to develop the land in a way that better fits the surrounding community? People flying into Wheeling need a place to stay, and executives want something nicer than the Hawthorne Suites down the street. I should know. I spent three years bouncing, excuse me, three months bouncing around hotels while we were waiting to relocate permanently. So why not look for, say, someone who wants to build a Marriott? Further, as a resident, I need places to eat. And yet I find most of my meals in Buffalo Grove or down at Randhurst Village in Mount Prospect. While we have options here in Wheeling, there are not many that are what I would call lunchtime friendly. <clears throat> and it's not just me. During the workday, we have a lot of industry around here, and people will send someone outside of the village to get food to bring back for the crews. So why not look for someone who wants to put in dining? The list of better uses for this land can go on and on and on. 
There are so many options that will provide more significant long-term revenue for the village and create more jobs. And there are options that can increase the value of the homes in the adjacent neighborhood to this property, which will increase property taxes for the village. However, if the village accepts the current deal, it will significantly decrease the value of the homes in the adjacent neighborhood, which is my neighborhood. And one by one, when we're forced to sell at significant losses, we'll be forced to take our property tax dollars, our sales tax dollars, and our goodwill to other villages. And no one really wants that. Finally, I would encourage the board to look at the mess between Grays Lake and Mundelein over the last four years over the trucking center there that has cost both villages hundreds of thousands of dollars in legal expenses. We can do better here in Wheeling. We can learn from others' mistakes and choose to wait for a better fit. So again, I would ask you tonight, please don't authorize this transfer. Don't authorize it tonight and don't authorize it at all. Do better. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Bill Hine. Good evening, um, Bill Hine, 200 Deborah Lane, Wheeling, Illinois. I'd like to uh, have a little conversation with you fine folks this evening relative to the uh, the sale of some property but by the executive airport to JV Global. Uh, I understand the fact that you must sign off on it to give them permission to enter into this agreement. Evidently you gave them the, that permission uh, when they in fact started the negotiations or the LOI with JV. My biggest concern is that normally when airports buy vacant property it's done for one reason and one reason only. And that's to secure open air space, vacant land, cl clear ways, so that nothing will hamper the growth or the stability of that airport. I'm sure that's the only reason why these pieces of property were purchased. Uh, so that being said, I would like to know why in the world are we selling property that is still vacant? It's under the it's under the leadership of the airport. Are we going to be buying this back again if something should happen to that airport? What's going to happen when they start redoing Wolf Road? When they ever start doing Wolf Road and making it a viable way of transportation and a way of getting out of the village of Wheeling other than Milwaukee Avenue? So on. They say that this is the the best use for this property is to sell it. Why? They wanted a clear zone. They got a clear zone. Why sell it? On the same agenda this evening, you are purchasing some property on industrial lane for the simple reason of buying up clear zones. So somebody's made a decision not to have clear zones to the west, but we need it to the north or what? What is what, what's happening with the airport? This contract that you are allowing them to sign um, has implications because of the fact that it's before the planning commission under a public hearing right now. Is this going to hamper anything? Is it going to send the round signals to the Planning Commission that we no longer want that property? What's happening here? These people that live in that area and the residents of the village of Wheeling deserve an explanation by this board. I'm hoping that you do that when it comes up this evening. But the best thing that can happen right now for is for you folks to table the discussion on anything to do with the property that's for sale right now. And that is 
up before the, the Planning Commission and you ultimately to make the decision to let a truck terminal there. That's the wrong place for a truck terminal. Wolf Road cannot sustain that type of weight. 53 foot trailers trying to make left turns onto Wolf Road. That is not the type of roadway for a truck terminal. Look what we've done. We kept it into the industrial three zoning. Chaddock Drive, that's where it belongs, like the rest of them, so they can get down to Hins Road and continue down some good, reliable streets, not Wolf Road. We're spending over $2 million to put all the electricity on Wolf Road all the way from Milwaukee Avenue to Manchester, $2,800,000 has been allocated. For what? A truck terminal? They call it a truck center. It is not a truck center. It's a truck terminal. Please give it some consideration this evening in your deliberation this evening. Just don't carte blanche it and send it back. I'm not asking you to do anything with it, but table it this evening. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Hine. Terry Stylin. Thank you, Terry Stalin, 473 Briarwood Drive, Wheeling, Illinois. A couple comments tonight. Uh, a few weeks ago, there were a few people in here asking for some uh, extension of uh, time to park over uh, the sidewalks when your driveway has uh, a bunch of cars in it. Just that I tell you that uh, last week I was uh, going to take my uh, grandkids over to the uh, library that's a block and a half away from my house. Got them into my double wide uh, <clears throat> stroller, started heading over to the library, and lo and behold, here's a driveway that has six cars in it. <clears throat> Blocking the driveway, no, no possible way to get around, so yeah, I had to uh, push the uh, uh, double wide stroller over the uh, parkway, down the curb, up the curb on the other side of the driveway, through some dog poop, and uh, back on the sidewalk. <clears throat> Eventually got to uh, the library and was quite ashamed that I had to bring the uh, stroller with dog poop on the uh, wheels into uh, our brand new library. So while this was done in the uh, afternoon time when, it sh when uh, cars shouldn't have been parking over the uh, sidewalk, I really don't think that we need to allow extra freedom from those rules that uh, the petitioners uh, a couple of weeks ago were asking for. So I please uh, ask you to consider that. Uh, the other thing, comment I'd like to make is about the truck terminal that's uh, being proposed for uh, Wolf Road. Again, I see that item on the agenda today and it looks like you're going to approve it and uh, there's currently rezoning on the plan commission agenda to discuss rezoning that property from its current zoning to uh, uh, and in, according to the comprehensive plan it's destined to be industrial of some kind but the uh, petitioner wants to make it i3 heavy uh, industrial for uh, a truck parking lot. Now it's immediately adjacent to a residential area. For those of you that have been on the plan commission, you know that the kind of rule of thumb is you have some kind of buffer between heavy industrial and residential areas, either I-1 or some kind of commercial or even a multi-family use of uh, residential before you get into single-family residential. I really find it uh, surprising that uh, the current, current opinion is that you're going to allow uh, I-3 industrial immediately adjacent to single family uh, housing. I think that should not be allowed at all and would ask you uh, 
not to approve what you're doing tonight and to really consider what those aspects of zoning can be. Because once you make it I-3, it might be a truck parking <coughs> lot to, today, but it could be something with uh, that's a lot more heavy usage, like uh, a Meyer material or something like that. So just do your diligence in considering that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Stein. Uh, Daryl Telkin. Hello, I'm Daryl Talkin. I live in the Avalon uh, Siena subdivision in Wheeling. I was here, I was the gentleman that he was discussing, the previous uh, person. Um, I basically got my questions answered by Officer Dunn, um, so I'm going to take up any additional questions I have um, with his department. Um, I just wanted to, sh can I show pictures? Can I give you guys pictures? I don't need any interaction back. It. Where I have five cars, and uh, this is the two short, the smallest cars that I have. And I, when I checked with Officer Don, he said, "Yep, you're parked. You're blocking the sidewalk. Um, the ordinance doesn't say block; it says on." But that's something that I just need to uh, understand how the police um, categorize it. Um, but when I have all three of my daughters home from college, and I have five. There's no way that I can fit, and those the, those pictures show that I'm at least a foot over the sidewalk. So, um, when you guys discuss the changing of the ordinance, if you if you will move forward with that, um, at least if you don't abolish it, if you change the hours, um, I think that would help. Um, but like I said, I'm going to discuss my options with the police myself. So, thank you. Thank you, sir. Deborah Wilson. Good evening, Village President Horker, ladies and gentlemen of the board, and fellow residents of the Village of Wheeling. I come to you this evening to draw attention to the identities of individuals behind the entity petitioner for item 13E on this evening's agenda. I delved into the public records of the state of Illinois, and I learned that one of the managers of this entity before us this evening, JB Global Services, otherwise known as Jerbel, is none other than Jerome Starr, the same man whom I previously informed you during my public comments on August 7, 2017 public meeting, executed a $65,000 mortgage with our recently ousted bankrupt village president, Dean Argyris, as was revealed by the Cook County Recorder of Deeds. The timing of this financial agreement between our village president and tonight's petitioner is even more disturbing. Election Day 2017, was the second scheduled date that our former village president's home was to be auctioned off by the Cook County Sheriff. I knew of this newly scheduled date because just two weeks earlier, I was present at the originally scheduled auction date because I wanted to see who was bidding on our former village president's home because he had stated publicly that he would be remaining in the home. At that time, when the auctioneer told me that he just got notice that he was it was rescheduled for April 4th, 2017, which of course I immediately identified as election day, the day this man would hope to be reelected as our village president. So while everybody else was at the polls early on the morning of April 4th, 2017, I was downtown at the Daly Center Courthouse where proof was being presented to a judge that Argyris 
that our, the Algiers home mortgage had been paid in full and the election day auction of his home was canceled. It was amazing that the April 4th sheriff's auction for Dean Argyris' home was suddenly called off at the 11th hour and on election day, no less, due to Dean Argyris somehow coming up with the money to pay off what I believe was a $198,000 mortgage that he owed on his house, money that he magically obtained on election day just two short months after his February 18th, 2017 default in federal bankruptcy court due to his inability to keep up with his repayment plan. How could a man who could not keep up with $5,000 a month repayment plan on his Chapter 13 bankruptcy suddenly be able to pay off a $198,000 mortgage two months later? How could our former village president, who was in his second bankruptcy, a man who lost his personal vehicles due to repossession, who began driving village-owned vehicles to, to his day job, and of whom the Daily Herald reported had used the public credit card for no stated public purpose, accomplish this? I believe it was in part due to the $65,000 mortgage that tonight's petitioner, Jerome Starr of JV Global Services, gave to Dean at that time. In my public comments on that August 7, 2017 meeting, I expressed concern that there was some nefarious correlation between this petitioner's capacity to obtain Cook County 6B tax incentive from the village, thereby reducing their taxes to only 10% instead of 25%, and the $65,000 mortgage that this petitioner gave to our then financially desperate village president. The timing certainly could cause a reasonable person to be suspicious suspicious, even though our former village president didn't default until February of 2017. He had been receiving warnings that this was going to happen repeatedly all through the fall of 2016, which is the exact time that Jerome Starr and his business partner, Vladimir Vrelgin, went before the plan commissioner the plan commission to present their ideas for this current project. That mortgage that a star gave him specifically states that if our former village president failed to pay back the 65 k in 12 months time, that Jerome Star would have legal standing to take possession of the home of our former village president. Fast forward to May 7th, 2018 meeting, and you will hear our economic developer, Mr. Melanfi, state that he was directed by our own village manager, John Svondilis, to tell the board his department's many concerns over JV Global Services' desire to put a parking lot in the truck parking lot in that spot. He was abundantly clear that this project was not a financially good idea for our village from an economic development perspective. It didn't stop there. Andrew Jennings expressed many concerns from his perspective in the community development department. Despite all of this input from our own staff about the downfalls of this project, it is still moving forward and not in a small way. When they came before the plan commission in fall of 2016, they were talking about having the capacity of only 28 truck parking spots. Then, in the last month, we've learned that they are up to 145 parking spots. And tonight, forgive me, and... Uh, and that night was May 7th, Trustee Kruger, who works for a safety company, expressed serious reservations, naming multiple reasons why this location is not safe for this project, the least of not, which is the fact that it only has one way in and out. And Trustee Mary Papantos, in what was perhaps her most zealous and admirable advocacy on behalf of her constituency, put forth the common sense argument of what it will cost our village to repair Wolf Road with all of these trucks coming in and out every day. Papantos provided detailed concerns of the impact on traffic that 145 trucks entering and exit every day would have. And still, even with the serious reservations expressed by trustees on your own board, and even more concerning, the sober concerns that village staff put forth, you continue to push this project forward. Trustee Brady described the project as a big mess, but even so, he voted to support it. So why would this board ignore all these flags? Why would they keep approving of a, an idea that is not in our best interest? I believe it's because our former village president, who is very close personal friends with many on this board, failed to be, pay back the mortgage, and the, done, that Mr. mortgage Wilson. specifically states that this petitioner has the power to evict him from his Good home, night, so Ms. he Wilson. has got us by the short hairs on the back of our necks. Good night. He can get whatever he wants because if he doesn't, if Dean, Wilson, he can put Dean out the on rules. the street. You Sit need to down. have loyalty to taxpayers and not to your former friend. <clears throat> Goodbye. Village President Dean Argyris. Thank you. Uh, you want to get your, your phone? phone? Thank you. See you on Facebook. All right. Anybody else? No, that's it. Thank you, Clerk Simpson. Consent to general? Consent to general, oh, please. Can do staff reports? Um, okay. No. Okay. Consent agenda. Okay. Uh, consent, consent agenda. Sorry. Good you didn't sign up. What's the? Well, the rules are you have to sign in prior to the to the meeting. It's you, you can definitely waive the rule, but that's that's the rule we've applied. Consistently. Consistency is important. Uh, I, I really need to stick with the rules on this. Is it? A, it's about an issue tonight. I take it. Um, we're, um, if I start 
if I start allowing variations from the rules, I, I don't know where I would stop. We, we do have a, a pretty uh, a public policy on the public comments. Um, I'm sure this is not going to be the end of the issue. You can come back at the next meeting and sign in and speak. I am sorry. Clerk Simpson, consent agenda. Consent agenda. All items listed on the consent agenda are considered to be routine by the village board and will be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless a board member or citizen so requests, in which event the item will be removed from the general order of business and considered after all other agenda items. 11A, ordinance amending chapter I, I wish to uh, take advantage of what you just offered us and ask that item J uh, be Ms. removed Wilson, from the consent agenda. This is my right at this particular time is the proper time to come up. Okay, you have made a commitment to uh, avoid nepotism and this petitioner uh, who you're waiving competitive bidding for this, his brother-in-law is uh, the deputy police chief. So I think that if you want to keep your promise Excuse to voters me. to Can avoid nepotism, I expect you to vote no on item J and to remove I'm, it to the regular agenda of new I'm business sorry, and off the consent I agenda. Just hold on for a minute. Thank you so much. Mr. Ferrola. Yes, the citizen has the right to request an item be removed from the consent agenda. Thank you. So there should be a motion to remove item J from the consent agenda and make it item 13 uh, uh, I, 13 I. That should be the motion. 11 J is 13 I. Would it be terribly difficult for you to stop talking just for a second when I ask you to stop talking? Because I do occasionally side with you. Stay sitting. You wanted to ask me a question. Was Can you say yes or no? Can your answer be yes or no? Have your seat. Would anybody like to make that motion to move that item off of the agenda, of the consent to make it item 13I? 13I. Are we required to make that motion? We are. Yes, we are. So are. moved. <clears throat> Second. Motion, Trustee Kruger? Yep. Second, Trustee Vito. Roll call, please. Trustee Kruger? Yep. Trustee Grady? No. No? Trustee no. Vito? Yes. Trustee Lang? Yes. Trustee Vogel? No. Trustee Papantos? Yes. Trustee Horker. I'm President Horker. I'm sorry. Yes. Okay. So then I don't read 11J. Okay. 11J is now 13I. Okay. Should I read them now? Please. Okay. 11A, Ordinance Amending Chapter 4.32 of the Village of Wheeling Municipal Code, Alcoholic Liquor Dealers, specifically Section 4.32.085, to decrease the authorized number of case of Class BV and increase the authorized number of Class NV liquor licenses. 11B, Resolution Waiving Competitive Bidding Requirements and Approving an Agreement with Nationwide Power for the Replacement of the Uninterruptible Power Supply for the 9-11 Center. Item 11C, resolution accepting a bid and approving a contract in the amount of 69300 with the YMI Group for the 2018 HVAC Unit Replacement Program. 11D, resolution accepting a bid and approving a contract in the amount of $174,688 with Utility Dynamics for the 2018 Streetlight Replacement Program. 11E, resolution waiving competitive bidding and authorizing the village manager to approve a contract with Builders Paving LLC for the 2018 Street Improvement Program in the amount of $375,659.72. 11F, resolution authorizing the village manager to execute a one-year contract extension with Schroeder and Schroeder Incorporated for the 2018 Sidewalk and Miscellaneous Concrete Removal and Replacement Program in the amount of $40,000. Item 11G, resolution approving an agreement with Hyman Reedman for prosecutorial services for the Village of Wheeling. Item 11H, resolution authorizing acceptance of the State of Illinois previously bid contract with Rush Truck Center for the purchase of one single axle drink dump truck for snow and ice control in an amount not to exceed $150,350. Item I, 11I, resolution waiving the fidelity bond requirement for the Alzheimer's Association to conduct raffle sales at Bob Chin's Crab House. 
11K, resolution authorizing execution of a right of way use, use agreement between the Village of Wheeling and McImmetro Access Transmission Service Corporation, DBA Verizon Access Transmission Services. I need a motion to approve the consent Mr. agenda. President, I'd like to remove item 11G, G. from the agenda. 11G. That become 13 13J. Yes. Get a motion to do that, please. Is that a motion, Trustee Brady? Yes. Motion, Trustee Brady. Second. <coughs> Second. Trustee Vito, roll call please. Trustee Kruger? No. Trustee Brady? Yes. Trustee Vito? Yes. Trustee Lang? No. Trustee Vogel? Yes. Trustee Papantos? No. President Horker? No. It's a four to three. So it stays? It's four yes. no's, it's four no's, three yeses. So it stays on the consent agenda. Well, it's pretty routine that if a board member requires uh, or requests uh, an item be removed, it gets removed. Um, then why do we vote? From a procedural matter, it's it's something that we we've, we've done in the past, uh, but it's uh, I, th I think it's something that uh, the code provides a trustee can have an item removed uh, as well as a citizen. Uh, so I, I think the vote is more or less of a. I mean, that's the way the code reads. Uh, it can be removed by a tr trustee or a citizen. I'll move to reconsider my vote. So will I. Okay, that's four to three. Okay. 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 All right. Do you have a civics lesson on that sometime? <laughs> yeah. Now, can I so move to outreach. approve the consent agenda? Mary? Pantos, yes. Yes, okay. And a second? I'll second. Trustee Lang. And now. Okay. Yep. Uh, Trustee Kruger. Yes. Trustee Brady. Yes. Trustee Vito. Yes. Trustee Lang. Yes. Trustee Vogel. Yes. Trustee Papantos. Yes. President Horker. Yes. Okay. And then we go to. All set? Yes. Mr. Monshane. There he is. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, <clears throat> what? Wait, do I heard her read it? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. It's helping yeah. your lines there. Okay. Presentation regarding fiscal year 2017 <laughs> comprehensive annual financial report and audit process by Skitch LLC. Now, Mr. Manchin. Thank you. Um, as the board is aware, the village com recently completed the fiscal year 2017 audit process, uh, working with our auditors from Sickage LLC. Um, we completed the process a month ago and distributed to the board a copy of the comprehensive annual financial report and related documents. Tonight, as we've done in the past, we've asked Brian Lefevre, who's a partner with Sickage, to present to you tonight his um, findings with regard to the audit process and to answer any questions that you might have. So I would like to ask um, Brian to do that now. Thank you. Well, good evening. Good evening. Uh, on behalf of Sickich, I'd like to thank the uh, president and the board for inviting us to present um, some brief comments on the re report resulting from the audit of the village for the year ended December 31st, 2017. Um, also with me this evening is Nick Bava, who is the engagement manager on the audit. Um, in case you stump me with any questions, Nick will be here to, to assist in that matter as well. Um, the audit process goes for, um, believe it or not, probably a, a nine of the 12 months of, of the fiscal year. Uh, including the planning phase of the audit and then the actual execution of the audit along with um, preparation of the comprehensive annual financial report. So the comprehensive annual financial report is um, in three sections, the introductory financial and statistical section. And oftentimes folks think of the audit as just being an audit of the finance department, but it's all the departments of the village. It's yourself with input um, to us as well through the audit process so that we focus on our, our audit procedures 
on the areas of highest risk uh, when we're conducting the audit. So a few highlights of the comprehensive annual financial report. Uh, in the introductory section, um, you'll find a document on Roman numeral three, um, and I think this document is, is, if not already, will be posted on your website. It is. Um, so it is um, for the benefit of all those um, wanting to look at the document, it is on your website. Um, the village received a war an award for its December 31st, 2016 Comprehensive Annual Financial Report from the Government Finance Officers Association, the Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting, uh, the 37th consecutive year that the village received this award, and it's the highest level of financial reporting within the local government industry. Uh, within the financial section, the first page is on Sickage letterhead. This is where we give an opinion on the financial statements. In order for us to give an opinion on the financial statements, we're required to follow the auditing standards issued by the AICPA, which tells us the types of procedures we need to perform when we're conducting our audit. And then we also must follow the standards issued by the Governmental Accounting Standards Board, or GASB, that tells us what this document looks like. So the financial statements um, for a local government, such as the village. We're pleased to present an unmodified opinion, and what that means is that the financial statements were presented fairly in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles, free of material misstatement. And this is the highest level of opinion that you can receive on your financial statements. In addition, um, within the Comprehensive Annual Financial Report, um, we've also issued our opinion on your compliance with the TIF laws in the state of Illinois. Uh, and you'll find that on page 172, where we get also give an unmodified opinion, meaning a clean opinion on the uh, compliance um, with your TIF districts. On the third page this year, you'll see an, an additional paragraph in the audit opinion that references government auditing standards and a separate document, which is the single audit report. The single audit is required any time um, that the village expends more than $750,000 in federal dollars um, from grant programs. Um, so this year, uh, you had $2.2 million in expenditures of federal funds, with the largest program being your CDBG Disaster Recovery Program, which is over $2,055,000. Um, and within the single audit report, we gave an unmodified opinion on compliance with that major program that we tested. In addition, we also gave an unmodified opinion on the village's compliance over laws and regulations that could have a material impact on your financial statements. So all good news there. Uh, one other document to bring to your attention, uh, the CAFR or Comprehensive Annual Financial Report is a rather large document. Um, if you don't have time to read anything else, I would encourage you to start with the executive summary, which is the, called the management's discussion analysis. This is the one place in the financial statements where the village has an opportunity to explain its own financial statements and do some comparison between fiscal years and actually give some of the whys to the numbers. It's very well done, and I would encourage you to read that. Um, in conclusion, all the information um, was complete and received on a timely basis from the village. All deadlines were met. Um, you, should, you should understand you have very hardworking staff, um, and your hardworking staff, um, along with a hardworking um, auditing team, um, made the, uh, the timeliness um, of this document come to light. And I would uh, be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Trustee Lang? No. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. I I have no questions. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Enjoy for working with the village. We have a public hearing. This is a public no. hearing. Am I supposed to call this to order? Civics lessons. Call, call the public hearing to order, ask for comments, and then motion to close. But I will read it. Oh. What, um, read it? 13 B. Call it to order. Public hearing regarding class, class 6 B for 1320 Gladstone LLC 250 252 Caddick Drive. Call to order for public hearing at 738. This is a public hearing for the public to make comments regarding the request for a class 6 B property tax exemption for 250 to 252 Chaddock Drive. A public hearing notice was published in the Daily Herald. Are there any comments from the public? There being no public hear public comments, I need a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. Motion, 
Trustee Vogel, second Trustee Papantos. Roll call, please. Trustee Kruger? Yes. Trustee Brady? Yes. Trustee Vito? Yes. Trustee Lang? Yes. Trustee Vogel? Yes. Trustee Papantos? Yes. President Horker? Yes. Okay, 13C, resolution, resolution consenting to Cook County Class 6B real estate tax assessment classification for the property located at 250-252 Chaddock <coughs> Drive in the village of Wheeling, Illinois. Mr. Malenafee. Thank you, President Horker. An application for a Class 6B property tax uh, incentive was submitted by 1320 Gladstone LLC. The applicant plans to purchase and rehabilitate the building at 250 to 252 Chaddock Drive um, and in order for its uh, related entity, Waukegan Roofing Company Incorporated, to occupy the facility for warehousing and distribution of products used in the roofing industry. The subject property consists of approximately a 50,000 square foot site with roughly a 15,662 square foot building that has been 100% vacant and unused since April 1st, 2014. Property is in need of substantial rehabilitation and improvements for Waukegan Roofing Company to occupy the property. Currently, the applicant is located in approximately 10,000 square feet at 1320 Gladstone Avenue in Waukegan um, in Lake County, but needs additional space to accommodate its growing business. Waukegan Roofing Company currently employs 57 full-time employees, all of whom will be invited to relocate to the subject property with the company. The applicant plans on adding two to four additional employees as soon as uh, possible at the property and within the next three years will add uh, two to four new employees, uh, excuse me, one to three additional employees uh, depending on future growth. The applicant has allotted approximately $99,500 to substantially rehabilitate the subject property, well, which uh, will include bringing the current structure and, uh, and sanitary facilities up to code, improve the ventilation, repair underground and overhead utilities, create a safe working environment through renovations and rehabilitation, update the landscaping and curb appeal, replace the monument sign area and uh, paint and then replace the siding, repave the north side of the drive and convert 6,500 square feet of office space into industrial, update the office space and other uh, general improvements. The subject property uh, with a Class 6B incentive would generate cumulative estimated total taxes over the life of the incentive of approximately $694,528 in tax revenue and it would be far greater than the tax revenue which would be generated by the existing building should it remain vacant. Village staff has reviewed the application as summarized and recommends approval of the Class 6B property tax classification based on vacancy for greater than 24 months with substantial rehabilitation. The applicant is here. Um, should the board have any questions? Questions from the board? Trustee Papantos. Thank you. If the applicant can. Short question, sorry. <laughs> First of all, welcome to Wheeling. We appreciate you coming here. What's your timeline for this project? We're scheduled to close tentatively August the 15th. We're trying to move it up to the 1st. But for as far as that you will move in and get your renovations done? October the 1st. So two months? Mm -hmm. Great. And do your employees all, are they there all day or do they use no, it as have, a site too? nine full-time staff that will be officed out of the facility. The rest of the, uh, they're roofers and they go out right to the job sites. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> no other questions? If there are no other questions, I would look for a motion to approve. So moved. Motion, Trustee Papantos. Second. Second, Trustee Kruger. Roll call. Trustee Kruger? Yes. Trustee Brady? No. Oh, excuse me, yes. Uh, Trustee Vito? Yes. 
Trustee Lang? Yes. Trustee Vogel? Yes. Trustee Papantos? Yes. President Horker? Yes. Welcome. Good luck. Thank you very much. Uh, D? Yes, ma'am. Um, D, uh, 13D, ordinance granting special use site plan approval for a special social service facility for Holy Spirit Life Learning Center at 111 North Wolf Road, docket number 2018-11. Mr. Jennings, what do we have here? Thank you. This is an existing social service facility that is in the space that had been previously converted from the uh, the uh, uh, by the same owner that would previously used it as a uh, resale shop. Uh, the new use of the property is a small scale social service facility uh, determined to be comparable in impact to uh, an office use. Uh, they are requesting the ability to intensify that use uh, beyond what would be considered comparable to uh, the impact of an office use. Uh, therefore, they do need uh, in order to expand the programming. Uh, they need to uh, uh, go through the special use process to be technically determined uh, as a uh, social service facility. Um, the plan commission has held a public hearing. Uh, they do have several conditions of approval. Uh, one thing to note uh, from the findings of fact from the public hearing on this item, uh, the plan commission, as part of their review, is asked to determine what the parking requirement for this use would be. Uh, there is no parking requirement in the uh, table in the code. Uh, in, in a case like that, the plan commission reviews the circumstances, takes the testimony from the petitioner, and makes a determination as to whether or not the parking seems appropriate for the use. In this case, uh, the organization has indicated that the, uh, the users, the, the, uh, the customer base, uh, primarily walks to the facility. Uh, a lot of school-aged children uh, attending after-school programs. Uh, the, the staff uh, is primarily nuns who carpool together, so they have a, they've demonstrated a very low uh, demand for parking. Uh, Planning Commission accepted this, and it's part of the, uh, the record on the findings of fact. The uh, ordinance uh, in front of you tonight does have three conditions of approval in it. Uh, I'll read them uh, before I introduce the petitioner. Number one, parking for at least bi uh, two bicycles shall be provided. Number two, an automatic fire uh, sprinkler system shall be installed prior to occupancy. And number three, the front parking lot shall be resurfaced and restriped prior to occupancy. I believe there are representatives here. Yes. Representatives. Hi. While you're getting up here, Mr. Jennings, you, you've um, worked with the petitioners for a while? Yes. You, do you feel they have a timeline, a, a doable timeline in order? Uh, yes, the, uh, the the primary issue that they've had is sort of the chicken of the egg, you know, in the, the ability to expand from a zoning standpoint, uh, how do you go through this uh, approval, uh, do you go through the approval process, and then do you make the investment, uh, they own the property, they've already invested in the building, but this next step to, to increase the capacity of their programming uh, is another level of investment. So it does make sense, uh, and I think that the, uh, the, although it is expensive, it certainly uh, it seems like they figured out how to uh, how to uh, adjust uh, to to be able to pay for this, and I'm sure they can answer that better than I can. Thank you. Uh, questions from the board, Trustee Papantos. Thank you. What are your hours of operation? Nine to six. Yeah. Nine a.m. to six p.m. Okay. And will you be, if need be, able to use? And is that Monday through Friday or Monday through Friday? Yes. Will you be able to use parking um, from the bowling alley or the other businesses around that area? We have a, um, a verbal agreement to do so if needed. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Papantos. Trustee Kruger. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, my question is probably for Andrew, um, and I just developed this question right now. On um, condition number two, an automatic fire sprinkler system shall be installed prior to occupancy. They're currently occupying the space now. That's correct. The, the intention with that verbiage there is to uh, increase the level of occupancy uh, for their new the expanded programming. So it wasn't required, but now that they're going to increase <coughs> it does, the... It triggers the requirement. Of this. I, I appreciate that one. That's a good one. Thanks. Trustee Brady and Thank then you. Trustee <coughs> Lang. Pardon? Trustee Lang. Brady, then Trustee Lang. Sorry. There was some verbiage in the uh, plan commission hearing about uh, the gravel parking lot in the back that uh, the previous owners were using it, and that you, if you needed, you could uh, uh, use it, but 
it really didn't st state whether or not it was legal because we do not allow parking on gravel in this community. And if you ever wanted to park back there, you'd have to pave it. You know, so uh, I'm hoping that never happens. And, and if that's the case, is the fire department going to need access back there other than gravel? You know, the, when they have to get back there, if there was a, a major blaze in that section, usually they want some paving back there for their big truck or whatever they need. Right. Uh, I think that's going to have to take a look at. Other than that, I think it's a good fit for the property and hope you have the best of luck. Thank you. Uh, no other questions? Trustee Lang, I'm sorry. Well, yeah, that was actually, that was my question. So do you plan on parking in the back? Do you plan on using that whatsoever? We do not. The, um, the access to the back parking, the back area behind our building is um, by way of the building next door, a small path behind the building next door, and there's a gate there. So we, there's not actual complete access to that parking lot. So we're not going to use that as parking. Okay. Thank you. If there are no other questions, I would be looking for a motion to approve. So moved. Motion, Trustee Vogel. Second. Second, Trustee Brady. Roll call, Clerk Simpson. Trustee Kruger. Yes. Trustee Brady. Yes. Trustee Vito. Yes. Trustee Lang. Yes. Trustee Vogel. Yes. Trustee Papantos. Yes. President Horker. Yes, thank you. Welcome. Good thank luck. You. Item 13E, resolution authorizing the village president to execute a deed for the transfer of airport property to JV Global Services, Wheeling, Illinois. Mr. Farolo. Thank you, President Horker. Before you use a resolution that would authorize the village president to execute a deed for the sale of four and a half acres of vacant land uh, on the west side uh, of Wolf Road, south of Hintz Road, uh, which is currently um, owned by the airport. JV Global Services for the purchase price of $650,000. The intergovernmental agreement between Wheeling and Prospect Heights allocates the sale, the power to sell land to the airport board. Uh, the airport board in January entered into this contract with JV Global Services to sell this vacant property for $650,000. Uh, JV Global Services has um, put up earnest money, that is hard earnest money, this contract is non-contingent. There are no zoning contingencies in this contract. So JV Global Services has contracted with the airport to buy this property uh, <clears throat> back in January. Now, the reason the airport has come to Wheeling and Prospect Heights is to prepare for closing, if a closing were to occur. Uh, closing uh, at this point in time is, is uh, uh, when I'm told by the airport attorney, scheduled to occur before the end of the month. Uh, otherwise, the earnest money would, um, th th would be lost to the airport. This is not a zoning approval. Uh, the, the contract to uh, sell this land has nothing to do with zoning. Uh, by signing, or not signing, but by authorizing the president to execute a deed who he'd be executing with the mayor of Prospect Heights is simply allowing the airport to be in a position to sell this property to JV Global if that's ultimately what occurs. Zoning is a separate issue entirely. Uh, as you know, concept review has come to you. Concept, they have now gone on to the plan commission. That hearing has been continued uh, and will be continued for further evidence. Ultimately, the zoning decision will come to you. But for now, uh, the airport board has come to us and asked us to uh, provide the president and the clerk any authorizations we need to to sell this property. Uh, so theoretically, what could occur here is uh, if zoning is not approved, ultimately. Uh, JV Global can still close on this property. They're, they're a property purchaser at this point uh, and do something else with it, sell it, do whatever the case may be. But at this point in time, what's before you simply is a real estate contract that the airport board uh, saw fit to enter into in January. And this authorization is merely to allow both communities' leadership to execute closing documents in, in the event the closing were to take place. And the last piece I would just add is that um, all airport property, we say it's, it's owned by the airport, it's owned uh, in, uh, by Wheeling and Prospect Heights as tenants in common. They, they share ownership of all of the airport property, which is why uh, the deed and any other closing documents ultimately come through both communities. So there, there was some comments made tonight. This is not a zoning approval. Uh, it simply is not that. 
Thank you, Mr. Ferrolo. Uh, Trustee Kruger and then Trustee Lang. I don't have any questions. I'm sorry. Trustee Papantos and then Trustee Lang. Thank you. Wrong, wrong direction. Okay. Uh, um, I just want to verify that the purchase price of this land, um, one, one citizen came up and indicated that it would be a bump for wheeling, that it has no effect on our budget or revenue, correct? This goes directly to the airport. It would not come to wheeling. It goes right to the airport budget, correct? And in no way, shape, or form does approval of the sale of this property indicate how any, for myself, we may or may not vote for any zoning or any approval for special use, correct? Correct. This should be viewed by this board simply a real estate. This is an isolated Absolutely. transaction. Absolutely. It's non-contingent on zoning. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Papantos. Trustee Lang. Just some background on, the, yes. on that piece of land um, that was acquired by the airport, uh, purchased by the FAA, acquired by the airport um, back when Hintz and <coughs> Wolf Road were realigned. And um, the property is not in any clear zone. We are, as you know, going through a master plan update, uh, a layout update, and uh, in, in no way is that land of any use to us in the future, which is why it was put for sale. Us being the airport. Yes. Thank you. Well, that other hat. Well, you're, yeah, you're sitting here. Thank you, Trustee Lang. Trustee Brady, you had a comment? Uh, yes, thank you. Has an environmental been done? This property? Well, uh, Trustee Brady, the airport is selling the property. Uh, I, whether or not JV Global has done environmental, that's that's you know that'd be on up to them and their concern. Typically, as you know, environmental studies would be done by a buyer. Uh, Trustee Lang, do you know if uh, environmental has been done on this, on this I property? I believe not. Okay. So if there's a uh, an issue here, who's who's liable for it? Well, the, the buyer would. You know, the buyer has the right to study the property uh, as it sees fit, and uh, if they're buying it as is with the environmental condition, they would take they would take that on. So that would that would be up to them if it has to be cleaned. Yes, not the, the two villages or two. That's a negotiated item in a real estate transaction. Okay, good. Uh, I'm a little concerned about this zoning thing now. If we sell sell or agree to sell this property to the uh, buyer. Once that's done, he can ask for any kind of zoning after that, can't he? Well, he's, he's asking for it anyway. Uh, well, yeah, as a contract purchaser, that, he could, he could, he's already been doing that. He could change lanes and go for something different. That, that's know. my point. If, if the, the trucking terminal is not approved, he can, whatever is permitted in that zone, uh, he can ask for. He can ask for special uses, uh, or the, the buyer can uh, seek zoning amendments as, as he's doing now. Can I uh, ask, is a truck terminal allowed in a, in a I-1? They're, they're seeking a rezoning because it, they need, well, Andrew, you probably have that exactly. I, I don't think it's allowed in the I-1, but it may be. No, the, the first time a truck terminal is allowed uh, in terms of the hierarchy of the zoning code is the I-3 district. I yeah. I'm against any text uh, amendments to any of our code. Uh, without a, a, a specific hearing on, by this board as to the ramifications of it. We got in trouble doing that before. I really don't want to change any zoning on this, uh, and, and I, I, I'm particularly interested to holding to a special use being a predominant force in, in uh, later on, you know, the, the regulation of this property. Uh, I think if we do anything, leave it I-1 later on, and, and see what we can do about making it a terminal of some sort. I don't see a, a parking lot that has mechanics, garages, and all this other stuff along with it. It just doesn't make any sense to me. And Trustee that's, Brad, I just anyways, want to repeat, this know, is not, not a zoning issue. Tonight. Right, yes, sir. That's not the issue tonight. But I want to set this up that in this sale that we will be able to, you know, address these other issues. At the, at the right time, at the at, at the, right the time, time the zoning comes before you okay. for consideration, that's when you okay. make a decision on zoning. All right, thank you. If there are no other questions or comments from the board, we do need action on this. Uh, I would look for a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Motion, Trustee Lang. Second, Trustee Kruger. Thank you. Roll call. 
Uh, Trustee Kruger? Yes. Trustee Brady? Yes. Trustee Vito? Yes. Trustee Lane? Yes. Trustee Vogel? Yes. Trustee Papantos? Yes. President Horker? Yes. Okay. F. Um, 13F, resolution authorizing the Chicago Executive Airport Manager to execute a real estate contract for purchase of 206 Industrial Lane, Wheeling, Illinois. Mr. Farola. Thank you, President Horker. Conversely, this is now an acquisition of property. <clears throat> Acquisitions of, of land have to come before both communities for approval. So you, what, what you have now is actually a contract for approval, whereas in the last item, the contract had been approved by the airport board in January. This, this item asks you to approve this contract to purchase 206 Industrial Lane, which is uh, 1.28 acres of land uh, currently improved with a 9,500 square foot commercial structure. The purchase price is $750,000. Uh, due diligence uh, on this property is 150 days. And if the property um, uh, appears okay to the airport, uh, closing will take place after the due diligence. The airport board has recommended to the communities that this property be acquired um, for f the further development of the airport. Uh, airport in addition to the approval of both communities, the FAA uh, has to weigh in and approve this acquisition, which, Trustee Lang, have they, have they done that at this point? Do you know? I do not know if they've done that. Okay, yet. but that's another uh, approval. But tonight, uh, for your purposes, is a contract for the acquisition of 206 Industrial Lane, uh, a similar resolution. In fact, both of these resolutions are also going before the Prospect Heights City Council. Thank you. Um, sorry, Trustee Lang, but Trustee Papantos was first. You'll be next. Thank you. If the due diligence fails, what happens at this point? The contract would, uh, the airport would uh, declare the contract null and void. And does the airport lose their earnest money at that point? No. No, there, there's a, there's a uh, it's not going to be hard money. The, the closing is going to be subject to a satisfactory due diligence result. Based on the area back there, the $750,000 seems extremely high to me. Has this been appraised by anybody else? Trustee Lane, would you like me to answer? Yeah. Yes, it has. We, we had it, the airport had it appraised, and actually it appraised for, it appraised for much higher. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Papantos. Trustee Lang, you had uh, you. something? Uh, yes, I just wanted to add, too, that uh, this uh, particular land purchase is uh, um, FAA. Once the FAA weighs in on it, they, uh, we have a 90% um, return rate. They'll, they'll pay us back for that land purchase by 90%. So the actual airport purchase is only 10% of that purchase price um, once the FAA approves it all. And the as is um, is uh, seems misleading because there is uh, you can almost look at any of that land along industrial lane and say it's contaminated one way or another. So, so it it may be it may not be. It's something to that we will look at um, definitely in this project. Thank you, Trustee Lang. Uh, any other comments, Trustee Kruger? Yes, thank you. Um, Trustee Lang, thanks for bringing up the environmental inspection, because I think it was clear that if the environmental inspection does not pass, that they will, that the airport will not move forward with the contract. No, but it, it, it'll probably start that process of, of uh, perhaps cleanup. And there is something, a contingency with airports in particular. There's an area called, and I'm not an expert at this, but called Brownfield. And that is where you basically pave over areas. You clean, do a clean up, and then pave over that area to encapsulate. and it's encapsulated. Right. Um, that's a, that's a an option if it comes to that in the future. This property is in a TIF district. Yes. Correct. Would remediation fall into TIF? That is a TIF eligible expense. So we could be asked by either the airport or any owner of that. Parcel. For help with remediation. If there Correct. is environmental contamination, what as is, where is means is that the seller is saying, you can buy it, but we're not going to clean it. So you have, in this case, 150 days to figure out what it is you're dealing with. If the airport 
finds some level of contamination that's going to be extremely expensive to clean, it can walk away. You don't have to go through with the transaction. And the, the contract protects the airport you know, in that regard. As is where it simply means the owner is saying, I've priced it right, you want it, you take it, uh, and you have to satisfy yourself. Understood. Thank okay. you. Any other questions or comments from the board? If there are no other questions, uh, I need a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Motion Trustee Vogel, second Trustee Papantos. Roll call. Trustee Kruger? Yes. Trustee Brady? Yes. Trustee Vito? Yes. Trustee Lang? Yes. Trustee Vogel? Yes. Trustee Papantos? Yes. President Horker? Yes. Item G. Ordinance amending the municipal code of the village of Wheelings relative to the permitting, regulation, and deployment of small cell wireless facilities. Mr. Ferrello. Thank you, President Horker. The ordinance before the board is being considered for adoption in conjunction with the passage of the Small Wireless Facilities Deployment Act um, passed in Springfield on April 12, 2018. The act addresses the location of small wireless facilities and small wireless equipment on uh, utility poles, um, both municipal and uh, owned by uh, utility companies uh, in the community. Uh, small cells are designed to assist with the transmission of data and wireless communication uh, in a more efficient manner. And this act was passed in conjunction with the effort of the telecommunications industry to roll out uh, their 5G telecommunications network over the next few years. Uh, the act provides uh, that small cell wireless facilities are, per are a permitted use uh, in all right-of-ways uh, in a municipality, in all local right-of-ways, uh, county right-of-ways, and state right-of-ways. Uh, and they're also permitted use in industrial uh, zones. <clears throat> For our purposes and the purposes of the municipalities throughout the state, the act severely limits the regulatory authority that we have over our right-of-ways and our utility poles relative to this equipment. It allows the placement of small cell uh, facilities on municipal utility poles or light poles and also other utility poles owned by Commonwealth Edison, for example. It allows placement on poles uh, that the telecommunications providers choose. In other words, we have very little choice when they come to us and say we want to put up a small cell facility uh, on poles that they're going to designate. They do have to uh, comply with certain basic standards <clears throat> uh, regarding safety uh, and aesthetics, but for the most part, whether or not you as a municipality agree to the placement of a small cell facility on a, a pole in a right-of-way really doesn't matter. They're gonna be able to do that. Uh, I want to go through quickly the limited regulatory authority that you have been given by the, by the legislature, the act requires the uh, small cell companies to submit applications and permits when they designate poles that they're interested in siting. Uh, what that does um, for you is allow you as a community and your staff to assess the structural integrity of the poles. I had a conversation with um, Director Janik today uh, saying that some of the newer poles uh, probably won't be able to hold uh, the small cells just based on, based on weight. But what the permitting process does is allow our staff, our engineering department, to, to look at the poles that are being picked, look at the equipment, the size of the equipment, assess structural integrity. <clears throat> it allows us to learn of proposed locations. It, it also allows us to um, propose alternative locations uh, that are close, uh, but um, you know, may or may not work. It's, it's really something that's going to be up to the, uh, to the carrier. The Act allows us to request a schedule for completion, <clears throat> and it allows us to request the specifics of equipment. Regarding municipal poles, the Act allows us to enter into agreements with um, the small cell carriers. It allows for us to um, address public safety equipment and how public safety equipment can or will be co-located on poles with um, small cell equipment. In other words, public safety equipment cannot be negatively impacted by uh, the location of this equipment. <clears throat> it allows us to require the 
carriers to comply with design standards that we have, we have developed and we're giving to staff to review. Those will come before you at a later time, but, but soon. The design standards will uh, push for as much as possible stealth, stealth equipment uh, and equipment that is um, designed in a way that is, is as aesthetically pleasing as possible. Uh, you have to understand there are going to be limits to that. Uh, there are going to be, there's going to be facilities and equipment on poles. You've probably seen these kinds of equipment uh, in other places at this point. One of the, uh, I think the goals of the act is to eliminate new cellular poles, if, if possible. Uh, although under the act, new poles can be put in the right of way too by the um, cellular company. But they, we do have the ability to offer co-location uh, poles in lieu of new poles. So there, there is some input that we will be given, but I, I can't emphasize enough, it's, it's very restricted. Uh, we can uh, require permit fees uh, as they come in and request uh, permits. Uh, there are annual fees that are allowed up to $200 per year for each small cell facility. Uh, and finally, the, uh, our, our ordinance before you uh, requires that the small cell carriers indemnify the village and provide uh, certificates of insurance, naming the village as an uh, additional insured. The passage of the ordinance tonight will allow Wheeling to comply with the new act and to be as restrictive as possible under the new act. Uh, it's, it's essential that you pass this ordinance tonight. It's got to be on the books before August 1st. You, like every other community in the state, are going through an ordinance like this probably this week <laughs> uh, or uh, a week close to this. Uh, but again, it's, um, it's, it's not a great situation in terms of right-of-way use. Uh, it seems like our right-of-ways are um, being sacrificed in a way to promote uh, wireless communications. But we do have a, a bit of control, and this ordinance gives that to you. Mr. Lang? Sure. Trustee Lang first, and then you, Trustee Vogel. <laughs> Do we have, Mr. Jennings, you may know this, have we had any requests for any of these types of uses or polls? And, because I, I think I've seen a few around mm -hmm. in, the, in the village, and they're not, the ones that are just single pole up above a telephone pole doesn't really look too out of place. So we have, we've had a few inquiries. We have one existing license agreement, and I can't remember the total number of uh, poles that are covered by that license agreement. Uh, but yes, we do have some that have been installed, uh, but we've had a few different companies make inquiries. Uh, Mr. Frohl, I don't know if you, you have an exact number off the top of your head from the license. I, I don't. It's uh, Mobileite, correct, uh, Mallory? Mobileite is the company. Um, I'm not sure how many were located. Do you know? Uh, I believe it was two initially. I'm not sure if they added any additional ones since their license agreement. But initially it was just the two. And that's a good point. Any previously existing license agreements, Wheeling and some other communities did enter into license agreements, sort of getting ahead of the curve. Those license agreements can go on for a period of two years maximum. Uh, and once two years goes by, uh, they now have to comply with this ordinance. So, but, but if the license agreement expires in a year, it can't be, it can't be renewed. So, thank you. Thank you. Trustee Vogel? What, uh, Jim, you mentioned that there was a permit fees allowed, but it says the maximum per the act. Do we know what that is yet? Or The annual fee is $200, and, right. and then the, we put the maximums for permit fees in the, in the ordinance, Trustee Vogel, and uh, there's, a, there's a chart, depending on what the application um, is about. Uh, a request to co-locate a small wireless facility that includes the installation of a new utility pole is a $1,000 permit fee. Request to co-locate co a single small wireless facility on an existing utility pole. Uh, that, that fee is $650. And a request to co-locate multiple small wireless facilities on existing utility poles uh, is $350 per wireless facility. So these are maximums that we can charge for the permitting fees under the, uh, under the state law. Okay, so we have, we have stated the maximum. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Trustee Vogel. Trustee Papantos? Thank you. How many um, of these could we fit on one utility pole? I am not sure. I think it's going to depend. On, uh, I think that it will depend on the uh, 
really the structural integrity of the pole, the size of the pole. Uh, I, I'm not aware of a number, uh, a max number, but with our standards, uh, have you addressed that in other communities, Mallory? It's unlikely the that there would be more than, uh, most poles won't hold more than two, um, but it will, they all have to have a structural mm -hmm. in, um, engineering um, report and analysis to make sure that they can support whatever is going on and they won't be able to attach more than is able without replacing a pole with, that is stronger. I mean, my concern is we're, we just approved replacing certain poles um, within the village and they won't hold them at all, so. If that, that was correct? the case, if they're not able to hold them, then um, they wouldn't be able to go on that pole or they would have to prepare a replacement pole the same, essentially, that looks the same, that would be strong enough. So we wouldn't just put them on if they're not strong enough, but we did address that at the time or find another location. Thank you. Trustee Vogel? Would the cost of that poll be the user's responsibility? Yes. Okay. Thanks. Trustee Brady? Thank you. Is this uh, ordinance uh, by the state uh, based only on municipal uh, utilities? Or can these things go on Commonwealth other utilities? Yes, that's what I was alluding to earlier. They can be located on utility-owned poles. They can go on comment poles because um, we got us and other utilities as on well. our major streets. We have probably our our utility poles are in better conditions and newer than some of our you know our utility poles, especially along Milwaukee Avenue and such. Yeah, they can they can go on comment poles uh, and, and in a right of way, uh, they do the, the companies do not have to get permission from us. So how do we regulate whether they should be on our light poles or uh, Edison poles? It's it's up to it's up to the provider. We regulate, we regulate our poles, we have standards, we have permitting requirements, but it's going to be up to the, it's going well, to be up the, to the, the providers the and the locations. If they use our, our light poles, they're going to have to run their utility wires underground, right? Mm -hmm. We're not going to let them string wire to wire. Uh, no, I, 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 you know. Our standards, no, our standards. The other, in the other case, if they go on comment poles, there are wires that they can string along with above ground if they wish. I think. I don't know. But it's something to take into consideration when we're talking with these people because we're going to want this stuff buried and, you know, the landscape restoration and everything else that goes along with it uh, is going to have to be taken into consideration versus mounting their equipment on a utility pole, an Edison pole, and having the ability to run their wires along with the other phone company equipment. We'll be looking at all the options, but this is a stringent, a stringent an ordinance as you're going to be able to, to have. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Trustee Brady. Trustee Vito, uh, Attorney Ferrello, looking at this, I'm looking at number three of the memo with three A through three E, mm -hmm. and doesn't I haven't read the state statute to be honest, but I I would have to assume that all of those are addressed in the state statute that it these polls have to. Um, require space for public safety uses, uh, have to be installed by trained people, uh, not interfere with public safety, uh, certain design and stealth, stealth standards and, and everything that you, that you pointed out. Is that absent in the state statute? No, the state statute addresses these, these kinds of regulatory authorities, but it doesn't provide standards, stealth standards and design standards. Um, we have uh, designed standards that uh, the staff has been, been given that yep. we, we can adopt. It's and, if, and if they don't comply, then they can't get a permit and they can't put it up. Permit can be, a right. permit can be revoked, uh, rejected, uh, or revoked, certainly. Okay, thanks. Sure. Thank you, Trustee Vito. Any other questions or comments? If there are no other questions or comments, I need a motion from the board. So moved. Motion, Trustee Lang. Second. Second, Trustee Papantos. Roll call, please. Trustee Kruger? Yes. Trustee Brady? Yes. Trustee Vito? Yes. Trustee Lang? Yes. Trustee Vogel? Yes. Trustee Papantos? Yes. President Horker? Yes. Item H, discussion regarding concept review for Pace Northwest Garage relocation 1600 South Wolf Road. 
Mr. Spondelis. Thank you. As the title indicates, uh, this evening you have a concept review from Pace Bus. Uh, this is a little unique from our other concept reviews, so I'll outline a little bit about what tonight's presentation and discussion is going to be about, and then hand it over to Director Jennings for an overview. PACE has requested an opportunity to present its proposed development to the board in the context of a concept review. There will be no decision sought from the board this evening. The board should use tonight as an initial opportunity to ask clarifying questions and or to raise concerns based on the presentation. The feedback given by the board tonight will hopefully be used by PACE as a guide in the preparation of the formal special use application. Uh, Andrew Jennings will begin with a project overview, we will then hand it over to the petitioner, and then back to Director Jennings uh, to discuss a little bit of zoning and special use. And then, if okay with the board, we'll open it up for questions. Mr. Jennings. Thank you. Uh, as Manager Spondulis just mentioned, this is a uh, concept review that's being held at the request of the petitioner in order to, uh, to obtain uh, some feedback from the board uh, to better prepare for the formal special use application process, uh, which as you know uh, is a public hearing uh, through the Plan Commission who then makes their findings and recommendation to the board. Uh, the project is uh, the conversion of the, uh, the building that you see pictured here. Uh, it is the building at 1600 South Wolf Road. Uh, the materials for the concept uh, review that you have uh, in your packet today include uh, two different options. Uh, we would be working with the petitioner through the process uh, for the special use review to refine their application with the with, uh, with which uh, excuse me with with whichever option they pursue uh, in terms of the uh, the configuration of the building. Um, the project, and, and I'll, I'll leave some of this over to the petitioner in a moment, but the, pro the project in essence would be to relocate uh, the existing facility that's on Northwest Highway uh, to, to this building in Wheeling at uh, Wolf and Willow. Uh, the, the petitioner has been searching for a, uh, a home for uh, the Northwest Garage for several years. Uh, they find this particular building to be very well suited for that purpose. It, it uh, allows them as their their introduction letter uh, informed you. It allows them to house uh, buses uh, indoors. Uh, it allows them to uh, accommodate growth in a few different programmatic areas that they've been uh, emphasizing in the last few years. It allows them to consolidate some of their uh, different functions into a single building. Uh, so for, for their purposes, uh, they have identified uh, several, uh, several advantages to this, uh, and I'm sure that they'll be uh, happy to uh, provide you some additional detail on that. Um, uh, as we had mentioned a few minutes ago, I will, uh, after they uh, introduce the concept, uh, I have a few staff comments um, myself. Uh, but with that, I'd like to introduce uh, TJ Ross from PACE uh, to provide you some background on the project. Mr. Ross, welcome. Thank you. Needless to say, this is the first time I've been before you and you don't know me. Uh, I am the executive director at PACE. I've been with PACE for the last 20 years. Came here 20 years ago from Phoenix, Arizona, where I spent 23 years in transit as well. So I've got, I guess, 43 years of uh, public transit. My background is engineering and also uh, have a master's in public administration. So uh, this has been my life work is in uh, public transportation, and specifically bus transportation. Uh, what, what we have before you tonight is uh, to review with you a proposal that PACE has to locate the Northwest Transit Services Center at 1600 South Wolf. Uh, the site is approximately 23 acres. There's an existing building there of 400,000 square feet. We are in the uh, process of negotiating the purchase of that facility with the current owner. Uh, as was said earlier, we would convert this facility to a transit operations uh, center for northwest Cook County. This would be the second uh, garage that we had converted to operate uh, compressed natural gas buses. Uh, we have just completed the conversion of our Markham facility uh, in South Cook to operate a fleet of compressed natural gas buses. There's a number of advantages to that, and someone who has worked in maintenance uh, many years ago. Uh, first off, uh, the fuel is cheaper. Compressed natural gas runs about a dollar a gallon cheaper. 
we use 6 million gallons of diesel fuel a year, so every dollar we save is a good thing. Uh, the other is, is that natural gas buses are quieter because they're spark ignited, not, uh, not compression ignited, they're quieter. And the new engines that, uh, that are in these buses, from a total carbon emission standpoint, uh, are roughly equivalent to electric buses because you have to create the electricity somehow, so you're going to burn carbon fuels many times to do that. And these buses are roughly equivalent to that, so we're moving towards a more sustainable uh, uh, fuel and more sustainable vehicle. Uh, uh, I'm sure some of you are aware of what our current facility is. Uh, it is a bus garage that was built in 1965 on the Northwest Highway in Des Plaines. It sits on 5.6 acres. Uh, we have 124 buses there and 275 employees. Uh, the facility is functionally obsolete, and uh, I can tell you it cannot be renovated to meet the region's needs. There's not enough space there. It is, uh, it is amazing to me that we do the work we do there. This, re this location is attractive to PACE for a number of reasons. Uh, first one, of course, is location. It has uh, quick access to 294. It supports uh, Northwest Cook. It supports the I-90 corridor where we've had a major increase in service, as well as the future of 294. And we all know that 294 is being rebuilt and will be completed in 2026 is the tollways, tollways goal. So this, uh, what they built for us on I-90, a separate bus lane, so when congestion happens, we can use that lane. Uh, the tollway intends on doing the exact same thing on 294. And that will open up a whole new market for us. The, uh, the size of this facility is, is fundamental to uh, efficient operations, being 23 uh, acres. It doesn't give us capacity to greatly expand service, uh, but it allows us to add 25 to perhaps uh, 40 buses uh, to the fleet. It is uh, essential to have enough space to do things efficiently. When you run these garages, every time you touch a bus, it costs money. And we want to not touch buses as much as we possibly can. What's exciting about this for us and my staff is that we can reuse an existing facility. About 40% of this building has 25-foot ceilings, which is great for a maintenance facility and the, uh, uh, for maintenance function, and about the other 60% has 18-foot ceilings, which is sufficient for uh, parking buses. All the buses would be inside. It would be my preference uh, that the garage door opens up, the bus goes in, and you never see it again until it goes back out on the street. Uh, and that, uh, that, of course, we would have to discuss uh, with your building people and then also with the fire marshals if we could possibly fuel inside. Sometimes we can, sometimes we can't. So this is a facility that we've been working a long time trying to find a location. And it's essential that the operation, without it, uh, we are constrained. Uh, we will not be able to... Uh, uh, do a good job of expanding transit services and serving the region's need. So you've had a long night here. I want to open it up to your questions and answer anything specifically that you have or at least hear what your questions are so that I can go back and, uh, and work on this. The PACE board is composed of mayors and former mayors. So when I, when I stand in front of you, I know that my board is going to say, what did they say? What are they thinking? How do they feel about this? And that's important for, for us to know. Thank you, sir. Uh, Trustee Kruger and Trustee Lang, you're next. Thank you, Mr. President. And thank you for your presentation. I have a couple of questions about uh, the CNG fueling station uh, proposed for the site. Um, could you just explain a little bit about where on the site you're uh, anticipating putting it and any safety regulations or commitments Okay. Um, that, do you all have the uh, floor plans, or yeah. was that given to you? If not, I've got extra ones here that I can forget it. Got it up here on the floor. Okay. There's the overall. Overall, the uh, let me get my orientation here. North is to the top. The area that you see near the railroad tracks on the in the northwest quadrant, okay. that that is that is the area that we are looking at for fueling. So that the the uh, the buses would would enter the facility 
at the uh, at the very northwest corner there. If the fueling was internally, then you would it was inside, then you'd have garage doors that would open up and the buses would go in and be fueled. If the fueling's outside, it would be a, a canopy arrangement, which we have built at the Markham facility in uh, South Cook. And I'm assuming that IEPA and EPA are involved in the, some of the regulations for this? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. It was a learning experience at Markham. We converted that facility, and we're going to have the dedication on the 25th or the 24th of July. Mm -hmm. So that, that facility uh, is 100% CNG now. Um, um, your, some of your presentation uh, in my packet said uh, about the conversion timeline for converting of all the buses planned for this location to be five years. Yes, we, we have. mean you won't be operational while that's happening? Uh, we, we would have to have the option of having diesel at that location for that time period. So we'd have to figure out how to service uh, diesel vehicles there uh, as well as CNG vehicles. Well, that was my next question. I was right. going to at least um, ask if there were, to confirm that there were no plans for diesel um, uh, there, but. Uh, we, we need that capability to start with. Uh, the design and the build could take some time, so uh, with any luck, we could accelerate the replacement. We replace about 72 buses a year on an average and with an 800 bus fleet. So conceivably, you could get it done in three years, but okay. everybody in staff says, TJ, don't say that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so. Thanks. Thanks for your okay. time. Thank you, Trustee Kruger. Trustee Lang, Trustee Papantos is next. So I like the idea of the indoor storage. You, you know, you're right. You won't even know that their buses are there uh, but for the fueling, which I can almost guarantee it will be outside, uh, knowing, okay. knowing our, our fire chief. Um, but what I am really, really, really concerned about is the lost tax revenue for the property tax that's there. Um, you won't pay property tax. We currently get property tax there now, or from the business that was there. Um, this is a question to our finance uh, director. Mr. Monashain, what, what are we standing to lose with this conversion? Um, Trustee Lang, currently all state is paying $939,000 a year in property taxes to all the taxing districts that cover that property. So the vast majority of it goes to uh, District 21, which receives $388,000 in property tax revenue. And then the second leading taxing district is District 214, which receives $198,000 in property tax revenue. The village receives just under $129,000 a year in revenue from this property. So, so that's a that's a big loss for this this community in general. It, it's um, fantastic for those who use the public transportation buses and so on, but it's a huge loss uh, property tax for us. And also concerning is the uh, the wear and tear on Wolf Road, of course. So, so given this. How can, how can we work together to be a little more creative with maybe helping the village a little bit better with some relief as well? Is, is there anything that can be done? Well, I, uh, my experience certainly uh, uh, with uh, Wolf Road, uh, I haven't looked at your comprehensive plan to see what your plans are for expanding Wolf Road, but uh, my memory is it doesn't, it doesn't even have curb and gutter in that location or storm sewer, is that? I just quickly looked at that. And, uh, and so that, that uh, by having a public transit facility there, it, I guess that we can team up to find those kinds of uh, funding to improve that roadway. I think that that's, that's a, uh, a real possibility. The, uh, the offer on the uh, how to replace all of the property tax. We have facilities all over, uh, you know, the whole six county region in northeastern Illinois, and, and we don't pay property taxes just like uh, everyone else. Right. And it's, uh, it's just uh, you know, hard, hard to say 
how do you get that? This is 275 employees that would be there uh, initially, and, uh, and we also all of a sudden have a very short deadhead for the provision of public transit services in the area. We don't have to drive the buses very far, so it's pretty economical to provide uh, additional public transit services. And that's, that's certainly something we'd work with your staff to look at. Okay. Well, so I think we can be of value to the community, to be honest. And, and, and that's, uh, I'm hoping so, but that's, it's, there's, a, there's a big loss, and that's what I'm trying to get my arms around is, is how we can perhaps work together to, to uh, provide some well, sort I'm, of We're open to suggestions on that. Okay. Thank you. That's all I had. Thank you, Mr. Lang. Trustee Papantos, Trustee Vogel, you're next. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ross, for your presentation. Um, just a few questions, and Trustee Lang allu alluded to it. Um, Wolf Road is, is tight there. It's two lanes. I used to... To the south, yes. Yeah. I, you know, like, wh where your facility is, it's, it's two lanes. How are the buses going to maneuver in and out, and what are we going to do as far as traffic at that point? Is there some help you can give us right. for that and area of Wolf? We're looking, at, we're looking at what that impact would be. Uh, that's one of the first one of the studies that we're that we're doing, and uh, I've already told my scheduling staff, uh, you can't go south on on Wolf Road. That isn't going to work. That's going to be too much delay. The uh, you'll you'll end up with too much uh, deadhead time that that you aren't sure what it's going to be. So I think we'd end up uh, uh, end up having to go there. north and go across to uh, to two ninety four. Uh, quite frankly, and, and but quite frankly, going north too from that facility, you're on two lanes. Um, I used to come home from work that way every day, and I'm telling you, when a FedEx truck decided at five o'clock it wanted to turn left, it was a problem. Well, of a backup for yeah. forever, and that's what I'm concerned about. Is is there something we can do with the road? To make it so that this people won't be sitting in their cars, you know, well, we swearing can, we at pace. We certainly <laughs> should consider that during the uh, the whole design process. I, uh, I I think that's that's imperative that we do that. Great. And what hours would the buses be going in and coming out of the terminal? We start early, so you'd see the first pullouts at probably uh, four o'clock in the morning, and most everybody be out of there by six six thirty. Uh, there may be some pullouts at around 7 a.m., but we operate during the peak hour, so we have to be out of the garage during the peak hour. And then the uh, midday pull-ins would be during, uh, you know, after after 9 or 10, so it would be after the peak hour. And then we pull out again earlier in the afternoon, typically. Uh, our afternoon pullouts are, are typically different. But that those details we can go over, the staff, uh, over with your staff because we do know what that looks like. And we're doing it right now with the same thing on uh, on Northwest Highway down the Plains. It'd be a very similar uh, uh, schedule for pulling buses in and out. Great. Um, for the CNG, and, and forgive me because I don't know how this works, would a bus have to refuel during the day, come back to, no. or is it? No, it's it, uh, the the. Uh, Many, way, many times uh, we really don't have to fuel them every day. So it, uh, we, but we do fuel everything every day because there's nothing worse than finding out your fueling doesn't work at night and uh, you don't have enough fuel to run the next day. So we can run at least a day, in many cases two days, without fueling buses. Okay. On your way here, um, hopefully you've noticed that we're developing a town center just to the um, west of this building. And we're, we're, we're really developing the, the central wheeling area and a downtown area, but we have very limited service. <coughs> now that we're going to have a, a bus depot here, can we increase I, our pace service? I, 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 I think what I'm hearing is that's going to be a matter for discussion, uh, and, uh, and certainly uh, that'd be a good discussion. Would there be a possibility of additional routes going to different areas also? I, I, I think so. Thank you. Uh, it might be a little different than what you call a traditional service. It might be more uh, of a demand type service, which is what we're doing in many areas. But I, but I think that uh, there's a good opportunity there. You indicated that your vans um, are going to move to this facility also, the van fleet, if I'm saying that correctly? Uh, the van pool program, which includes uh, about 800 vehicles region-wide, 
uh, they would not, they're all out in the world, but uh, we have staff that manages that program and uh, we rent space. So we would hopefully move that staff and maybe 20 or 30 backup vehicles that they have. So we'd bring more employees to, uh, to Wheeling. And would those vehicles be converted to CNG over time also? We haven't done that. Uh, uh, that just hasn't been something that we've done. Where do those vehicles get fuel? They get fueled at normal gas stations with, uh, mm -hmm. with uh, uh, credit cards. Okay. We have a program. Do we know what the environmental impact of um, CNG filling stations is for future? I mean, I, is it too new to really know what's going to happen 60 years from now when you have to move again? Your, your one facility is 60 years old and you've outgrown it, which is typical. Um, you know, so what's, do we know what the environmental impact is going to be? Have any studies been done? Uh, it, uh, the, it, there's all kinds of air pollution studies. Uh, I don't know that I can quote them all, but the uh, the fact is, is that the is that the emissions from a natural gas engine are less less complex than out of a diesel engine. So you're gonna you're gonna see lower carbon emissions out of a natural gas engine. It's a step in the right direction. Uh, probably the next step, if we can afford it, is hydrogen. Uh, fueled vehicles, or even if we can get light enough batteries uh, to have all all electric uh, all electric vehicles, a lot of push for that. The transit industry is pushing electric buses every place, but they're really expensive. And you mentioned 275 employees. Yes, that's what we currently have at Northwest Garage. And are they all working the same shift or separate no, shifts? No, so? we have a seven day. Uh, basically two shifts. There's a few people on midnights, but it's basically a two-shift operation. So how much parking would you need for employees and visitors? Uh, Sorry. I don't, I don't have that number. <laughs> I don't have that number in my head. And is that available at the site? Have you looked the, at that? Yes, we'll evaluate that. And your Markham facility is brand new? No, the Markham facility is a conversion. Uh, it was a diesel facility. And the Markham facility was built in probably 90, uh, 88, 86, 85. 85, okay. So we converted that just recently. So is that the only CNG facility you that's have? The, that's the only one I've managed to get done so far. And is that the only one in the state? No. Uh, Rock Island uh, operates uh, compressed natural gas buses. Uh, Springfield operates compressed natural gas buses. Those are the two I know of. All of California is virtually compressed natural gas buses. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Papantos. Trustee Vogel, Trustee Brady, uh, you're next. A couple of questions. One to address to Michael. Michael, clarify, with 275 employees, is the state income tax allocation uh, allocated to the place of employment, the municipality of employment, or to the hometown, right? It's uh, income tax is distributed based on population. Population only, so it's not, okay. And then the second question is, hopefully, something to think about. Uh, is there a possibility of putting a stoplight in? Yeah. Oh. Any place along Wolf yeah, Road? Yeah, I mean, I mean if, that, that's if that's something that's been looked what, at. That's what needs to happen, that's what needs to happen. Okay, but it will be looked at. Yes. Okay. And then last of those... Uh, you had some office space in there and office workers. I forget, did you mention a number that will be considered more office workers? Let, let, me, get, let me come back to you with that, what that okay. would be. I'd just be guessing right now. All right. Okay. Thank you. Everything else is pretty much answered. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Vogel. Trustee Brady. Thank you. Uh, what area will this garage cover as far as your services go? It, uh, we, uh, the Northwest Garage currently has some buses that start in Evanston and, uh, and, and, in, uh, and in Elgin. And uh, as far north, of course, is Wheeling and uh, down to uh, O'Hare. So it's a rather large area that we do cover, but primarily it's in that quadrant uh, between 294 and uh, O'Hare. Uh, that quadrant that's defined by that, that kind of northwest quadrant there. I, you know, my biggest concern with this is traffic. Uh, and I 
you know, as you see, we're we're, we're looking at maybe a a, a, a new truck parking uh, lot going in north of you there uh, on Wolf Road, and you coming in here, and, and and I have to tell you, there is no no good way to go on Wolf Road north or south, if if I'm not mistaken, uh, and I have to ask, maybe uh, Andrew, will a, a bus be considered the same as a truck? On North Wolf Road, You're referring to a from a zoning perspective, what is the from, land use from a, from a, from the traffic? Uh, you know, uh, because we right now we out we do not. There's allow. a prohibition for semi trucks on Wolf Road. I, I believe the answer is no. I, I don't believe that they're considered to be the same, but we can always check. It'll be something to look at. Uh, you know, and to be honest with you, that'll never get four lane there. So, and, then, and then you have just, what, block and a half, two blocks south of that, you've got the train tracks, which are constantly stopping traffic and backing everything up. I, I go that route, I go south and sometimes come home north from there, and it's always, it's always a traffic jam. And I tell you, of all the places that you've chosen, you know, I think you've chosen the worst one for us to, to contend with. Uh, and, and really, that would hurt us the most not only in in traffic but in in the loss of revenue so i i kind of a little doubtful about your project seriously sorry thank thank you trustee brady i'll that yep okay um i had a few concerns uh relative to the uh uh the physical layout of the structure uh if you're parking everything inside, you're not going to need additional security lighting or, or parking lot lighting? <coughs> no, the only parking lot lighting you'd need is for the uh, private vehicles. Uh, and basically, your impact to infrastructure, we're looking at uh, roads, I mean, and from a practical standpoint, uh, impact to infrastructure. You're not going to require more sidewalks. You're not going to require additional uh, water mains. Uh, your, uh, your, your impact infrastructure. Your impact yeah, to yeah, infrastructure. Our, our, our plan, is, our plan is, is to have the building facade re, re, be essentially the same as it is now. Uh, there isn't any sidewalk on Wolf Road there. No, that's what I mean. And that might be a discussion that we should have, and because uh, sidewalks are always good for public transit. The um, and your your you know, the design stuff would would really have to be. A, it, we usually get into the nitty gritty with villages on about design items and staff I, I'm just, has that. I'm just more, uh, when, I, when I was looking at the project, I was more concerned about the uh, potential physical changes to the structure relative to the property and the development around it. Like, like your company, initially before I started reading this and before you started talking, uh, I had uh, concerns about the, uh, the chain link with the barbed wire on top around the buses. And that's, you know, it, that was the image in my mind when, when this whole thing came about. Uh, it has certainly changed yeah. since, since I hear what you're talking about. Because I, I didn't want, I, the idea in my mind was if, if we were going to have some uh, middle of Chicago type chained off facility right here where we're trying to upgrade industry and stuff, it wouldn't really present a... Uh, a welcoming image to the businesses on either side, but you're not talking about anything like that. Because we put all the parking inside. Once you go right. to the door, you're done. Right. Yeah. You're, the security's at the door. Right. I, I like that. I I like where this thing is going. I I am concerned about um, some some of the impacts. There's uh, the the traffic is worrisome, but we have. Uh, it, it's been sort of standard practice for us with any other large developer to to do traffic studies about would a light be necessary, would a uh, right-of-way be necessary for uh, left-hand turn lanes. And these are all standard uh, uh, requests from any type of development that would come in. And you wouldn't have any objections to just a standard type of, of review on that type of um, uh, program, I suppose I'm saying, like, 
Pre to make sure that you fit. Uh, we, we, have al we, we are already have started traffic, uh, a traffic study, and, uh, and we've engaged with CMT to do that. And, saw the T-shirt. Yes. And, uh, and they have already started the, uh, the, the process of determining what would be the impact and having the information so that we all discuss it because we're all talking about spending public funds, we're talking right. about spending, making public facilities, and we're talking about serving the public, and we got to work together and see what, what, is it, what the impact is going to be and how to best deal with it. We can't just dump a problem on you. Thank you. <laughs> that, that just isn't the way PACE is. Well, and, and I'm not looking, my goal here is not to look for anything additionally that we wouldn't ask for somebody else who was moving into a large parcel of property like this. And, and you, if Walmart went there instead of where it is, there would have to be changes made. And right. it's, it's basically the same type of a perspective I'm looking at at this. Right. Okay. You've had the same function there since 1968, right? Right. And so now it's going to be new. Time to look. Yes. Uh, Trustee Brady. One more question, if you don't mind. Uh, uh, when your drivers finish your route, do you give them a specific way to come back to the garage? Yes. Okay, so they just can't. No. Away because no, they're, if, they're all, if they're off route, they're in trouble. Because there'd be a couple of uh, intrusive shortcuts through Avalon Siena and Foster Avenue that would certainly upset no. a lot of people. No, we're going to pay them to drive the way that we tell them to do. Okay. And they decide to drive a way they want to do it rather than the way we pay them. We're going to have discussions with them. Good. That seems reasonable. <laughs> uh, any other questions? From no, thank you. Side? Any other questions? Um, Mr. Svondilis, I know we're not making a vote. What is our next step here? Uh, next step is further communication between the petitioner and staff. Uh, ultimately, there will be a special use before the board. Excellent. Mr. Ross, thank you so much okay, for coming. Thank you for your time, and I appreciate you staying to listen to an old bus guy talk. So thank you. Thank you, sir. Clerk Simpson, we have a couple of other items. Yes, 13I. Which is? Which is 11J. A resolution waiving competitive bidding and approving a Fifth Amendment to the Village of Wheeling contract with Jeans Village Towing. Anybody want to discuss this, or we need a motion? So moved. Second. The uh, motion trustee uh -huh. waive somebody. Wait, who was first? Lepantos. Lepantos. Second, trustee Vogel. Roll call. Yes, please. Trustee Kruger. Yes. Trustee Brady. What are we voting on? Pardon? What are we voting on? We're voting on Jeans. Jeans, Jeans, Jeans towing. towing. Jeans towing. Who are we voting for it? Yes. Jeans towing. It was pulled off. So, Okay, we're voting to open it? No, we're voting to approve it. The motion was to approve. Right, the Correct. Motion. To approve what? <laughs> to approve uh, the contract. The Fifth Amendment to the contract with Jeans Village Towing. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. Trustee Vito? Yes. Trustee Lane? Yes. Trustee Vogel? Yes. Trustee Papantos? Yes. President Horker? Yes. Okay. Um, 11G, which is now 13J. Resolution approving an agreement with Hyman Reban for pro prosecutorial services for the village of Wheeling. Do we need some discussion? Well, if you don't mind. Sir? You know, I, I have nothing against Mr. Hyman or his reputation as an attorney. You know, but this situation of his hiring and Mr. Stavros leaving is something that uh, there's very little information on. The facts related to the situation have become confusing and difficult stories are coming from both sides you know and I'm, I'm really not prepared to make a decision one way or the other in, in, in a, in a effort not to hurt, hurt a young attorney's career uh, you know when we voted to give Mr. Stavros the contract uh, to be our prosecutor a year ago or so we felt confident <clears throat> that we have a young bright man to serve our needs up until a few weeks ago or maybe a month ago, all was quiet until we were told Mr. Stavro's contract was not being renewed and a retiring judge, Mr. Herman, is to take his place. You know, with no discussion. You know, I propose we pull this from the agenda and table it until we hold a meeting 
where we can talk about the facts and get the proper information to make an educated uh, vote on this subject. Uh, if that's a motion to table, is, it should Is that a motion? To table it. Okay, do we have a second? I'll second it. V second Trustee, Trustee Vito. Okay. Roll call. Trustee Kruger? No. No. Trustee Brady? Yes. Trustee Vito? No. Trustee Lang? No. Trustee Vogel? No. Trustee Papantos? No. President Horker? No. Okay, now we get a vote to vote on it? Motion fails. Uh, we now vote. Uh, I need a motion to approve. Uh, what is it now? The item number. Um, 13J. I need a motion. I'm looking for a motion to approve 13J. So moved. Second. Motion, Trustee Papantos. Papantos. Second, Trustee Kruger. Kruger. Roll call. Trustee Kruger? Yes. Trustee Brady? No. Trustee Vito? Yes. Trustee Lane? Yes. Trustee Vogel? Yes. Trustee Papantos? Yes. President Horker? Yes. Okay. Now we have the bills. Yes. Wait, official communication. Yes, official communications. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. I did it to you a couple times. We'll get it together. <laughs> I'm new at this. Mm -hmm. uh, any uh, I'm not, staff? Mary. Trustee Papantos. Thank you. I just wanted to congratulate Director Mondeshane and the finance staff and obviously everybody else for the, I don't know how many years in a row, the excellent audit results, but... Um, it's, it's become the norm, so <laughs> thank you, Michael. I know the amount of work an audit takes, and I don't think most people really realize that, but it's great work. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Papantos. Trustee Vito? Yeah, I'd like to at least ask staff what Mr. Philippi's concern was about the, the firewood. I, that can't be our ordinance. If it is, that's just terrible, and I violate it weekly. So it, is, um, it is not our ordinance. All right. So, I, I mean, hopefully we can give Mr. Philippi some clarification. I don't want to relitigate his case. I don't know what the facts are, obviously, but I just want to be sure that we can burn wood in a fire pit. You can burn wood. You cannot burn landscape waste. Okay. Perfect. What's landscape wood? Leaves, like landscape waste. Oh. Please. Like Branches, that. little okay. fire chief has. Yeah, uh, between our public safety departments, um, all those questions can be answered with the petitioner. I, I agree, this isn't the place. Right, I just wanted to clarify that just in case anyone was, well, I was wanting to make sure. And, and it just as everyone knows, uh, the proceedings through adjudication can always be appealed through the uh, Cook County Circuit Court. So there are options beyond just conversation with our public safety personnel. Um, I have nothing uh, else. What? Trustee Kruger. Trustee Kruger. Real quick, um, Manager Spandil, this is our first meeting since Rock and Run the Runway, right? It is. So thank you to you and your whole staff for a great, great evening. Uh, and I wasn't there for the run part of it this year. I heard that was great. But, um, and all the citizens that braved coming out in a 105 degree heat index, uh, to uh, hear our bands and see our fireworks show and drink some beer and have some food from not the enough trucks. beer. No, but not we, enough uh, beer. We this certainly year. appreciate everyone coming out in support. Yes, despite the. But everybody wanted water, so I think hydration was the key that day. But <laughs> thanks to uh, all the staff that helped and uh, and pulled Thank it you. off. That's it. Sorry. Thank you, Trustee Kruger. Nothing to be sorry about. If there are no other comments. We need a motion to approve the bills for June 14th through July 11th, 2018. So moved. Second. Oh, motion, Trustee Vogel. Second, Trustee Papantos. Roll call, please. I lost my piece of paper. Trustee Kruger? Yes. Trustee Brady? Yes. Trustee Vito? Yes. Trustee Lang? Yes. Trustee Vogel? Yes. Trustee Papantos? Yes. President Harker? Yes. We have no executive session tonight, so I'd like to thank everyone for sharing your evening with us, and I need a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Motion, Trustee Lang. Second, Trustee Papantos.
All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Spend the night. I don't care. Good night, everybody.